So I had asked if there was any really difficult ones and you jerks told me one and two, but how about for real? Are there any difficult ones? We, the joke is old now. Wow. I know, Nick. I was gone. You were gone? No, I was gone. Okay, oh, yeah. Nick, yeah, number one. It's it's really hard. You do? That one's oh, it is an actual one. Okay. All right, so 30 goes along with this whole deal up here. Let me read it quick. Hopefully you've read it. I'm not going to read it out loud. The X is near the top. Y. And then Z is at C level. Okay. Which shows the most probable path of the flowing stream from point X to point Z. So in the reading, it told you that X is at the top of a hill and it is labeled hill slope. So X is at the top of the hill. Y is at the bottom of the hill. And then from Y to Z, if you notice how it was labeled, it's labeled coastal plain. So what do we know about something that's a plain? It's flat. So what you need to realize is how do streams behave when they are at um, different slopes? So what do we know from X to Y for the speed of the river? It's going to be faster from X to Y because that's on a hill and slower from Y to Z. So here it's fast and here it's slower. Then if you think back to part of the evolution of a stream, how stream or the life cycle of a stream, or if you just think to water slides, uh, what's the shape if a stream is going fast? It's going to be straighter. Then what happens to the shape of the stream when it starts to slow down? It gets windy. So from here, it's going to be pretty straight. And here it's going to start to get bendy. Hopefully that was one of the answers. Yeah, it looks like answer one. So straight and then a little bendy. Were you saying something? Number three. What's wrong with number three is it's bendy up here at the top. And they snuck that in hoping you would just see that straight line and then the really bendy. And I did like three, two, because it was more bendy. Uh, but this this bit up here is... That's out. That's not, that's where it's going to be going the absolute fastest. So that is answer one. Were there any others that you really struggled with? No? Take a look through. Take a minute to look through and see if there were any others that really. So then if I, I can call on any of you for the rest of the answers and you're going to tell me the right one, let's, thank you. I knew that threat would work. 27. 27. Oh, well, then you should have been, you should have been. Uh, 27. Okay. So this is, um, this was that weird thing that I just said, you got to match up the land with the shape of the river. So what you should see here is that there. The arrows are showing the river is going this way, this way, this way, this way. It's coming, all coming from one central point and going out from that central point. We know that rivers flow downhill. So what this is saying is somewhere up here is going to be the highest point. And then it's cool. Those streams are going out to lower points. Which one of these shows the highest point in the middle? Okay, so see how that's kind of like um, like a, a, almost like a volcano top situation. So it's like a mountain where it's going to come down each side of that mountain, like the spokes on a bike. So with question, this is a perfect example of how those questions will look. So this here, what you see in this first one here, you should be seeing that there's like wavy hills. In that case, the rivers are going to go down those hills and there'll be two rivers here and here. This one, it's a circle depression. So the um, the rivers will go down into that hole. And here it's just going downhill. So they'll just go downhill right there. 
So it's just matching up the the land with what the rivers will look like. You don't believe me. What what's quite what are you questioning still? Nothing. Okay. I, I did get it right. I just okay. Like, yeah, I don't love these questions because these pictures aren't the best. I will say on the regions they will be printed perfectly clear. So you can hopefully see a little better into them, but they are not the greatest questions. All right, any more that you were maybe got right, but had to question too much while you were doing it? Nobody? All right, well then let's go around the room. Uh, let's start with TJ. What's the answer to number three? Three. Three. So yes, the... So um, here's again where you got to be careful with the wording. It does say the longest settling time. So that means if you started a timer, it's the one that's going to have the longest time from the top to the bottom. All right. How about you, Izzy? Uh, which graph shows the relationship between wind speed and average wave height? I didn't teach you this. Kind of hoping you guys knew this. Guys, stop counting where you're going to be. I'm going to go all over the room. <laughs> Yes. Faster the wind. It's not my first day, Cam. Faster the speed, the wind, the higher the wave. I, again, didn't teach you that. I was just kind of hoping you knew it. Um, Cam, how about you for the next one? Um, This one is saying which one will be the last to settle when the velocity decreases. Um, you got the flattened part right. So flat is going to take longer than round. Why one? What's di what's different about one? Yeah, clay are the smallest. Um, so that one's going to, so a flat, small particle will take longer than anything else. See, now you don't have to worry. I'll call on you again. Um, Nick, how about this next one? This one again asks which one would settle to the bottom first. Why is it hematite? Because it's the most tense. By the way, in the reading, it did tell you. You did it backwards. It's so funny. You, you did it? Oh, that's not funny. That's just wrong. <laughs> so be careful. Part of this is going to be the reading because it did say which one will settle to the bottom first. So not, not the shortest, like not the fat, never mind. It'll get to the bottom first. So it's the fastest. It did tell you in the reading that they were all the same shape. They were all spheres and they were all the same size. So the only thing that was different was their densities and the most dense things will settle to the bottom first. Um, Takoda, you want to do another one? Seven for me. Um, you know, I should probably look at my answer key. Yeah, it is number one. The lead sphere must have had the highest density. That's why it settled faster than the glass one. Uh, number eight, let's go with Taylor. That is what I had. Again, in the reading, it told you they were all made of copper. So you should remember they all have the same density. It told you they were all something else it told you. Um, I think they said they were the same volume. Yeah, oh, they were equal masses. So they were the same weight. So it wasn't size, it wasn't density. This time it had to be shape. Um, Ruby, how about this one? When clay particles of uniform shape and, and density. So again, they got the same shape, same density. Which one will settle faster? Did I skip one? Oh, I'm sorry, silt will settle faster then, yes. Yeah, why clay? Yeah, clay is going to be smaller than silt. Again, guys, this isn't something you have to memorize. It is right there. So silt clay is even smaller than silt. So silt will settle, settle faster than clay. So um, if you notice me trying to rush through reading that, confused TJ, and probably anybody else who is listening. Be, um, so what I'm trying to get at is, please slow down, read every question, read all the answers. 
because reading is, especially with these, like the settles faster, slower, faster settling time, slower settling time, all is going to mess with you. Um, how about Colton number 10? Where is the most deposition likely to occur? Two, yep. Everything else is going to be erosion, by the way. Sam in the back, number 11. Um, which shape is A, you think? It is two. Again, in the reading, they have identical volumes, so they're the same size and density, but different shapes. So these were all made of the same thing. They were all the same amount of whatever it was. It was just the shape that was going to affect it. Um. Oh, all right. So the shape and size of these cobbles suggest they were collected from. Uh, Michaela, you want to do that one? Why do I do that every single time? Um. I know. I did. Okay. Oh, I'm like, wait, no, it really is Michaela. Okay, Kayla. <laughs> and then when you said I got half of it right, I was stuck on the math part. I'm like, but no, there's no, she's definitely not Mackenzie. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. All right. Do you want, do you want to tell me what the answer is? It is. Why is it one? Do you want to tell me why or should I ask somebody else since I don't know who you are? Somebody want to, you, kind of, yeah, they're rounded and they're kind of big too. So being big, they were in the fast part of the stream and they're rounded. Oh, all right. Now that I'm embarrassed. So bad. Um, which one of these is more uh, deposition than erosion? Sophia, you want to do this one? Yeah. Number one, it has more stuff beat. Like this area is getting dropped off here. Everything's just leaving. So it's being cut away here, but here it's being dropped off. That was what you're supposed to notice there. All right. We've got which agent of erosion is reset? responsible for shaping the particles forming this rock. So we've got a piece of conglomerate and it's got sediments in it. What could have possibly put made those sediments? Um, Riley, did you get this one? Um, it's not gonna be glacial ice this time. There is something about this one. What do you notice about all those pieces? They're rounded. So what agent of erosion makes rounded? Yeah, running water. Um, I think I know, did you say glaciers because they were all different sizes? That is a very, and I, when you said it, I stopped and looked, I'm like, wait, but glaciers, they're gonna be round, angular, all mixed up. Everything about glaciers is gonna be mixed up. Um, hey, did I ever mention to you guys what mass movement is? Okay, I thought I had brought it up, but maybe I hadn't. Mass movement is another word for gravity erosion because a mass of sediments is moving. That's where that comes from. Um, have I called him? Um, how, Sky, how about you for 16? U-shaped valleys, one, glaciers. Um, oh. Yeah, I see you guys in the back. Alex, how about number 17? What is this a picture of? Or what made this picture? Yeah. What is that a picture of, by the way, guys? A delta is what you're supposed to be seeing there, and you know that those get made by a river. This question here is exactly what I've been getting you ready for all chapter. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. <clears throat> You guys are so funny. Like to pick up poor Mrs. Ritz who makes mistakes, doesn't know kids after a hundred days. Um, glaciers, what, um, Madison, which one do glaciers make? B, yeah, oh, two of you, sorry. Two Madisons. Uh, mass movement, like I said, is glaciers. How about you, you Madison, which one is um, mass movement? 
B, uh, wait, is that what you said? You said E, that's good, because it's not B. <laughs> Running water or streams, which one, Jack? Um, running water makes which letter, A, B, C, D, or E? And it's not C or E. D. Yeah, D. Thanks for speaking up, guys. I'm old and deaf. Um, which waves make which one? A, and um, through a process of elimination, but not for real, um, loss of so topsoil and dunes is for sand. Ooh. What? What are you talking about? Oh, dude, I can't, okay? Did you guys read question 20? I'm curious, show me on your fingers. Don't look at anybody else's fingers. Tell me the answer. I said, don't. Some of you fell for it. So I'm seeing two answers. I am seeing answer two and answer four. Reread the question carefully, looking at all the words and all the pictures and see who's right and who's wrong. To figure it out. Remember my rule of reading all the words, including the pictures? PJ, why were you wrong? Yeah. So it would make sense that A was worn out more because it was older. But look at the dates. Is it older? No, nope, that's from 1922. This old, this one's from 1892. It's been sitting around for 30 more years. So it's not been exposed longer. It is answer four. It just must be made of, A was made of something weaker, less resistant. I didn't, I didn't say everybody was wrong. I said some people were wrong and I was making everybody double check their answers. Number 24, all right, let's keep going. We got kettle lakes. Hopefully you remember those are made by glaciers. Here we were looking for the outside of the meander. It's gonna go faster and cause more erosion. What would have made this drain, um, this type of deposition, notice they go in a nice, bigger, medium to smallest. The only one here that's going to be sorted is a delta, that's from rivers. Uh, landslides made from what, by the way? Glacier, what? No, gravity. And moraines are made by? And how about drumlins? Glaciers. Remember, the glaciers and gravity are going to be unsorted. They're the only ones everybody else is sorted. We already did 27. Oh, shoot. Here's where I should have probably done an answer key before going over all of this. Um, and of course, now I can't even find my reference table. 75 centimeters per second can transport what? So we got 75 centimeters per second in here somewhere. It can transport a pebble. Can it transport anything else? No. Everything else under it. So not just pebbles, but pebbles and everything below it. So that's going to be answer three. It can't transport boulders. It's not going to be only pebbles. It's not going to be only clay. <laughs> uh, probable of arrangement of rocks deposited by a glacier. Remember, everything by glaciers is unsorted. And remember, not layered. Layering is a type of sorting. All right, almost done here. We already did 30, 31. So compared to the stream velocity between X and Y, between Y and Z is most likely less because the slope decreased. That's answer three. Between Y and Z is gonna go slower because it's gonna have, okay, good. Cause I'm like questioning it. I'm like, no, that's definitely the right answer. This is a question you need to be able to answer. Which one did you pick? One, two, three, or four? Stop looking at everybody else's answers. Why is it three? 
Bigger to smaller along the bottom. Perfect. Any questions on anything so far we've done this chapter? No? No, that's not it, it. Now I did ask you to pick up your new packet. So I'd like you to grab your new packet and your reference table. And in the meantime, I should have had you do those already. If you have your own colored pencils, that would be great. If not, come up and get it one, two, three, I think five, five different colors. But if you don't want to get five between you and your neighbor, get five different colors. So let's do that. I'm sorry, I should have warned you. Yeah, you can use highlighters if you have five different colors. I need one. Pam, do you have a blue highlighter? Okay. Highlighters or color pencils or heck, even crayons would work. Hey, Nick, I think they have a seat in ice for you. Oh, I got much attention for something I didn't do. Well, this time you are doing it, so you totally deserve it. Oh, crap. This is what I say. Stop it. What is this? So, all right, we are briefly for the next 10 minutes starting the next chapter. Keep in mind you have a test tomorrow on the stuff that we just reviewed. What I'm about to talk about will not even remotely be on the test, but we're also not really learning too, too much today. So I did ask you to open up your reference table to pages eight and nine. So pages, do you not have yours? Come grab one from up here then. Pages eight and nine are the reason that I have your reference table stapled like a book instead of like a packet, because pages eight and nine go together. Um, if you happen to look at the title, it says Geological History of New York State. This talks about how old everything that's happened in New York State since the day it was born until today. You guys have learned um, how to read stuff like this. This is nothing more than a timeline. Are you familiar with timelines from another class? Typically, social studies has a timeline. Um, whether that's usually where they put timelines, often it's a timeline for like a war. Um, so you're gonna, I can't do that because I don't know all my important dates of wars and things like that. But we could do, let's say we made a timeline of you. Where would it start? Birth. Typically, it would come over and be something like this. It'd be a long line. And it would say you were born here and you'd probably put the date. What a, and at the end of the timeline would be when you died. What sort of events might be on a timeline of you besides when you're born and when you're dead? Right. First words might be put on here. <laughs> Marriage. So you might have when you got married. What else might you put on here? When when you got when you got your first job, is that what you said? Okay, yeah. so when you worked or when you got a new job. What else might be on there? Yeah. When I'm in front of my teacher and stuff. Yeah, when you got in front of your teacher in earth science class and got kicked out. Yeah. Okay, when you get divorced. Wow. Hey. Okay, typically that comes after getting married. You know that whole situation, right? Like we can't get divorced before you get married, or at least your first marriage. Uh, you might put on here when you have kids or when you have grandkids. You guys know how to read a timeline, right? Okay, that basic timeline so simple. But this is also a timeline. Pages eight and nine is a timeline. It's the ugliest timeline I have ever looked at. So first of all, do you see any dates on here? Because timelines need dates. 
Kind of. What, what do you yeah. see? Far uh, did I circle it? I didn't circle it on here. So timeline right here says millions of years ago. I know you cannot read mine, so you have to look at your own. It says millions of years ago there. How many millions of years ago is it at the top here? Zero million years ago. Hey, by the way, when was zero million years ago? Right now. So right here. In fact, let's add that. You know what? I'm going to go to my actual paper one so I can write on it. So let's go ahead and label that where it says zero million years ago. This is today. All right, if that's today, what happens when we go down this timeline? It goes further into the past. And this 4,600 million years ago at the bottom, this is the oldest. 4,600 million. Have you ever heard of a number like that? 4,600 million. You know what, Colton? Let's, let's, why don't you sit down and we'll hook you up with the sharp one in a minute. Uh, 4,600 million. That's a weird number, right? Okay, so you know how sometimes you say 1,500? Like, is 1,500 really the number? No, it's 1,500. So when you say 1,500, you're really saying, the number 15 with a hundred worth of zeros, so three zeros. So if I'm saying 4,600 million, it's the same idea. I have to put the same number. I have to put a million's worth of zeros. So the number million, had, that's a million. So we need to put a million worth of zeros there. I'm putting that million, oh, I did this wrong up here. Oh, I'm an idiot. 1,500 is 15 with a hundreds worth of zeros. That's two zeros. So 1,500 is 1,500. Same deal here. A million has six zeros. So I took my 4,600 and added those six zeros at the end, which just like Sean said at the beginning is 4,600 million. I would like to write that right in this empty space. It's 4 billion, 600 million. Quiet, you didn't notice that. So that was going to be my next. So that says 4 billion, 600 million, and then there's six zeros after it. Or like Sean was saying, that's the same as saying 4.6 billion spelled out. Either way, there are three different ways to write the same thing. So they all mean the same thing. Oh, I guess we did not get to coloring. So that is all we're going to do. That was a huge waste of time. Um, tomorrow, you got a test. Oh,